Hello friends, this is Jerry Thomas from Sakshi Apologetics Network in India. If you are born and brought up in India, you would have definitely heard about the story, the humiliating trial which Maniniya Sida was subjected to, the trial by fire for the mere suspicion of her husband Sri Rama. We know that story. But what we are not often told is that these kind of trials which are known as trial by ODLs were practiced in India until the Britishers banned during the British Empire in India. There were nine types of such trials which was practiced widely across India with Brahmins being definitely subjected to the most minor of those trials being weighed in a balance and Shudras being subjected to the worst kind of trials administrating by poison if the poison doesn't have any effect on them they are vindicated as an innocent otherwise they are held as guilty this was practiced across different parts of India any rational objections against these kind of inhuman and foolish trials were silenced by the Hindu scriptures. At this point, I must also bring into your attention that almost all ancient societies had similar trials, but they were all stopped. For example, in the case of Europe, the divine light of the Holy Bible, when it shined upon them, the church was forced to, after practicing the carrying on the pagan baggage for quite a few centuries, after the theologians objected, the church was forced to stop it almost 600 years before the Britishers banned it in India. You see, the difference, the remarkable difference between other societies, they, in specific the European society which had similar kind of pagan practices but because of the Bible they stopped it. Unfortunately in India any objection to these trials were silenced as I said by the Hindu scriptures. We are going to look at this issue today, the trial by OTLs, how it was practiced how the Hindu scriptures sanctioned it and we are going to contrast it with the European example as well and see what the, how the worldviews, the Christian worldview and the Hindu worldview makes a practical difference in our life. Let us start with the story that we all know as I said of Adharaniya Siddha. In Valmiki Ramayana, Yuddha Kanda, Sarga 115 onwards, you can read this story. In Sarga 115, Sri Rama raises an unwarranted suspicion, accusation against Maniniya Sita. He says, I have rescued you from Ramana not because of you but because of my honor and you being with a strange man are free to go anywhere now you are of suspectable character. When the Honorable Sida heard these words, she had nothing to counter because this is an accusation without any evidence. There is no way that you can prove or disprove it. It is like a conspiracy theory. So she was left with no option except to resort to what the Hindu scriptures has prescribed the trial by ordeal and in this case the trial by fire. You can see that in Valmiki Ramayana Yuddha Kanda Sarga 116. In fact you can read all these quotations we have given it as an article in our sakshitimes.net and you can see the link in the description below this video. So Honorable Sida starts this trial in Sarga 116. And when it comes to 117, the Hindu gods, instead of dissuading Sri Rama from
from going ahead with this trial they are trying to remind Sri Rama that he is God he himself doesn't know that he was God so they had to remind him and help him out of his ignorance and teach him that he is God and when it comes to Sadhga 118 it says after the Honorable Sida had undergone this trial she was vindicated by the gods Hindu gods Atni, the god of Hindus, took her in hand and said she is innocent. So in this mythology, the story ended in a right note. Unfortunately, for the several Indians who believed in this myth, the story never ended like that. In 99.9 .9 cases, the story ended in disaster. You can see such stories, such incidents recorded and reported by the foreign travelers who visited India across centuries. For example, Abhijay Dubios, a French Catholic missionary who was in the early 1840s and all in India, he wrote in this book Hindu Manners, Customs and Ceremonies, Part 3, Chapter 8. He said, near to him, there was a young woman whose husband again suspected her just as how Sri Rama suspected the Honorable Sida of having a suspectable character. So in this case, this poor young woman who, who might have heard, definitely heard the stories of how Sida was rescued by the fire by the Acti Gods because of her innocent character. She also was ready to undergo a trial. And in this book, it says, to prove her innocence, he forced her to plunge her arm up to the below into a bathing of boiling oil. This was one of the trial of the ordeals was she was forced in a boiling oil she was forced to dip her hand and you will know what will happen what would happen to this poor woman this poor woman believing in such mythologies readily did it she suffered a lot her character reputation was ruined and finally unfortunately she died as well so many a people in india believing in such kind of myths and following such shastras, the Dharma shastras, ended up in miseries. Justice was literally burned down. It was pivoted. This was not just recorded by the Catholic missionary. It was recorded as early as say AD 602 to 664, Yuan Chuang, a Chinese Buddhist monk who traveled to India. His travel records are uh, translated into English and published by Thomas Waters. And this Chinese Buddhist monk also uh, records the various forms of trial by OTLs. Trial by fire. One of the variations of trial by fire people say is the boiling of the oil or taking a heated axe in your hand. Trial by poison, administering poison to the people and seeing whether they, the poison has an impact or not on them if there is no impact they are left free you know what would happen if you are administered poison correct so he also records on his travel notes as early as ad 600 and ad 600 in the ad 600s he records it similarly in ad 140 uh, 14, uh, 1400s 1480 to 18, AD 1521, the book of Duretta Barbos, a Portuguese writer and office from Portuguese India, who had recorded what he has seen, in India had similarly recorded that in the land of Malabar, again this hot oil test and several other trials of ordeals were practiced. So you can see from AD 600, AD in 1400, the, almost all the trial, uh, the, uh, the travelers who came to India, they all recorded. Again, Alexander Hamilton, a new account of the East Indies, written in AD 1744, 
page 315 he also speaks about the similar trials which were administered in India now it is not just the foreign travelers who recorded it even there are certain Indians who recorded the actual incidents that had happened in the Asiatic researchers journal volume 1 Ali Ibrahim Khan who was the judge of Benares in the British in the under the East India Company he also records this nine types of ordeals and he goes on to record a few real instances that had happened in Benares in Asiatic researchers volume 1 chapter 23 on the trial by ordeal among the Hindus Ali Ibrahim Khan chief magistrate at Benares records that a Brahmin named Rishwara Bhatta accused one of Rama Dayal a lenient painter of having stolen his goods of course again a accusation without any evidence and in this case the poor Ram Dayal by believing in all these mythical stories he thought that if he undergoes this trial by ordeal his innocence will be proved he also was was actually forced to thrust his hand again into a burning vessel and his hand definitely was burnt not only his hand was burned adding insult to injury like any other trial this trial by ordeals also had a judicial pronouncement at the end of the trial and in this case pandit said pandit said Benaras pronounced him to be guilty and he was forced to pay the Brahmin an innocent made to suffer twice because of a foolish trial methodology you see this was recorded numerous instances of this was recorded by the travelers who visited India who saw this with their own eyes and as we saw even by the very Indians who had uh, held uh, different positions in India unfortunately several Hindus are forced to still believe in it which is a matter of concern for us Srisa Chandravasu who was a Sanskrit scholar and a mathematician who lived in 1861 to 1918 in other words even after this ordeal was banned in in Chandogya Upanishad 616 1 to 2 when it speaks about the trial by ordeal as a commentary he says this the ordeals are not testers now the ordeals are not uh, being practiced now for there are no longer judges and kings who are masters of the occult forces and can regulate the aura so the problem is this there are not enough people who are trained in this who has that power to practice this if however there be any such judge or king test by ordeal again regain its probity value in his court if any Hindu claims that he has that power he can restart it again this is a dangerous situation and that is why we need to discuss this and raise these questions at this point in time now why was a Sanskrit scholar and a mathematician who was an educated guy at that time had was forced to defend it or believe in it because Hindu scriptures has clearly taught it you would see that even in 2013 in Gujarat in February 7 the Hindu newspaper published a news item it says hundred people were forced to dip their hand into boiling oil because a BJP leaning independent MLA suspected them of not having voted for him so if they dip their hands into a boiling oil and if they are unheard they voted for him if not they did not vote for him this was reported in the Hindu newspaper so educated Hindus still believe in it why so the reason is the scriptures teach us this let us look at the scriptures how what Hindu Dharma Shastras has taught Brihaspati Smriti chapter 10 speaks about nine types of ordeals 
there are various kinds of ODLs, four of them are important, but Brihaskudi Smriti says about times, types of ODLs. And it says, ODLs can be, this trial by ODL can be executed, administered, even if there are witnesses in a case. So in the case of Maniniya Sida and others, we have seen that there were no witnesses or there were no evidence and this was one of the uh, methods that the Hindus believed can uh, prove somebody guilty or innocent uh, in a court of law. But this Smriti, Brihaspati Smriti says even if there are witnesses, in certain cases, in heavy crimes, the king can still administer it. The Hindus are now clamoring for Hindu Rashtra. In a Hindu Rashtra, will this Hindu methodology will come back? Would they want it to come back? Many of them might want. But these are serious questions that we need to ask. Brihaspati Smriti then goes on to describe those times. As I said, the balance, trial by balance, then trial by balance, usually administered for uh, Brahmins in certain places for women as well, but mostly for Brahmins. In many several cases in the real life, it was not administered to the women of other caste. Uh, a Brahmin would be made to sit on one, one side of the balance and the other side uh, they would put the weight and they would weigh him second or third time. If the weight increases, if the, the weight uh, or his weight decreases, then he is held guilty. How will his weight decrease or increase even in one or two days? It will not have make any changes, especially in a balance. So the minor, the most easiest was given to the caste, the topmost class, the upper caste in the Hindu hierarchy. The caste's denial is like Sri Raji Malhotra and all should pose and ask, even in the court of law you were practicing such discrimination in even in foolishness. How can you say that this was not the case? Whereas when it comes to, uh, the, as I said, there are nine kinds of it and when it comes to uh, the uh, Shudra, it would be poison. And Brihaswati Smriti says, all these ODLs have been ordained by self-existent Brahman. Oh, these are all given by Brahman. These were not mere parts of the tradition, like in other ancient cultures, but this was given by Brahman. So if, if a Hindu Rashtra comes back, we, would ex we should expect these kind of things to come back, unfortunately. You would see how it was cast discriminated in Narada Smriti, first title, chapter 24, it very clearly says in 334, a Brahmin should be tested by balance. Poison should be given to the Shudra. He must not give poison to the Brahmin. Oh, a Brahmin should not be given poison. Only Shudras should be given poison. Akni Burana, while it might differ in certain aspects, it agrees in this. It concurs with the Narada Smriti and says in Akni Burana part 3, chapter 255, 28 to 31, poison are for the Shudras. If a Shudra is committing a crime, we can or is accused of committing a crime, we can find him whether he is a criminal or not by giving him poison. The Shudras who are now clamoring for Hindu Rashtra, Hindu Rashtra should pause and think whether you want this trial to come back. Because this is recorded not only in Ramayana, not only in Smritis, not only in uh, uh, Vedic literature as we saw in Upanishad. It is recorded in almost all kinds of scriptures that you have. It is a unanimous proposition given by your Hindu Gurus. Do you want this to come back? Again, the process I already explained that uh, in the trial by balance, 
uh, Brahmin would be made to sit uh, in one uh, side of the balance and the other side you will bear it. Uh, this is given in Brihaspati Spriti chapter 10, uh, 18 to 20. In fact, this is given in many Spritis with uh, uh, minor variations. And when it comes to administering the poison, again Vishnu Smriti chapter 13 again records the same thing. As I said, you can read all these uh, quotes in the article that we have given. The link is given in the description in the video below. And in certain cases, the poison test which was administered to the Shutras and even the people who were outcast outside of this Varna system, they were made to put their hand into a pot containing a viper and they were asked to take a ring from it. If the viper doesn't bite them, then they are innocent. If the viper bites them, then they are gone. Now this is a historical, it was a historical practice. This is given in Hinduism and law, chapter 8, in the conceptions of authority, published uh, by Timothy Lubin and published by Uno, Cambridge University Press. So you see how dangerous, how discriminative, how inhumane was this system that was practiced for millennium, centuries in India, across widely practiced because the Hindu scriptures prescribed it and defended it. Now anybody would know that if you put your hand into a boiling oil, your hand will definitely burn. And in certain cases, if the burn is uh, above certain percentage, you are going to die. Like the, how we uh, thought about that woman who was suspected of adultery by her husband died in the initial case that we discussed. If you are going to walk through the fire or if you are going to catch the fire, then definitely your hand is going to be burnt. If you are going to be administered poison, definitely it is going to have an impact on you. And in certain cases, you might die also. You know, we know that this is a natural, there is a causal relation between what is given and what is uh, the impact. It cannot prove whether you are innocent or guilty. It is foolishness. Didn't any Hindu thought about it? Didn't they think about it? Were there not rational people in India to object it? Of course, there were rational people. But they were all silenced by the authority of the Hindu Shastras. Let us look at it. In Manusmriti chapter 815, which speaks about oath or ordeal. Oath is also another way of trial. Oath is just you taking an oath in front of your God or deity saying that I have not done this. That is okay. Then it is up to the deity and you to settle it. Ordeal is this. Ordeal is different. Ordeal is what we were discussing until now. So when it speaks Manusmriti chapter 815 and all speaks about uh, 115 to 16, it speaks about the ordeals, various kinds of ordeals. You can see it in chapter 8 of Manusmriti. And in Medadi's commentary on Manusmriti, these questions were raised. These were questions, the exact same questions were raised. How can actually the fire know the truth? And will not the hand be burned if you put your hand into a fire? How can it be a test for any kind of things? This was all asked and how is it was answered? It was answered to appealing to the Hindu scriptures. It says how can the fire know? Because the fire is a God. You see how myths and false ideas, concepts of God destroys human life even practically in this life as well. It was answered like that. It was answered, the fire is a spy of the world, fire sees everything that happens, so fire can testify whether you are innocent or not. And it again quoted one incident from uh, a Brahmana scripture, Brahmana text. We will read that talk also. So again, the voice of reason was silenced. In uh, the Brahmana uh, scripture that you will see in chapter 25, this is the Brahmana of uh, 25 chapters, uh, this Brahmana of 25 chapters, there is an incident recorded about Bhattabhavatsa. His brother accused him of not being a Brahman, a proper Brahman and said his mother is a Shudra. Again, the caste denialist will have to take note of all these things. They say, oh, this is all occupation. No, here. The point is that your parentage is not proper Brahmanical. 
and how could this poor vatsa uh, prove himself he had to undergo this trial by otls so medadi's commentary appeals to this brahmana text and says see, these are real incidents these are real or at least they believe that these are real incidents if you start believing in myths as real incidents this is where it takes you it takes you to destruction so the rational objection was destroyed again from real life examples you would know okay this person is innocent but trial by odl proved him guilty you know that the trial by odl is wrong but even this was overruled on the authority of the hindu scriptures you see how hindu scriptures prohibited any kind of reformation in the indian society and why it required an outside intervention and in other cases the missionary intervention both the foreign and the native missionaries interventions to reform this society we will discuss at that large in other episodes but in this we are discussing about the trial by otl finally it required the british empire who never believed in any of these ordeals to intervene and ban it because to them all these shastras and myths matters nothing to only people who give no value to such myths and shastras can actually reform india whether they are outsiders whether they are inside, whether they are indians so as per the section 336 of the indian penal code if you attempt to endanger the personal life safety of others you will be held guilty so any trial by otl which endangers the personal safety of the others you will be held guilty guilty so this is how they banned it you see a cruel a foolish discriminatory trial by otl prescribed defender given life support by the hindu shastras had to be banned by people who never believed in this the scriptures even when the britishers banned this or even when they attempted to ban at different places there were resistance from the from the hindu kingdoms of this land let me give you an example before i move into the western uh, case for example when colonel mandro whom we thought about in uh, refuting sashi theory was one of the videos when he tried to ban it in kerala the so called enlightened princess of travancore whom the so called moderate hindus like sashi tharoor promote they objected it they wanted the trial by odl to continue they objected to colonel mandro no of course they have to object it because it is prescribed in their religious scripture you see how this was defended and continued contrast now this with the western example in the west also they had this trial by otl as a package from the pagan ancestry of course we know that before they became christians uh, in the 3rd 5th centuries and all uh, and it continued the process for a long time uh, uh, many of them remained pagans but uh, most of them became christians uh, this pagan practice of trial by odl was somehow how christianized and uh, was they continued to practice it but how did they stop it it was stopped in uh, the historian says that the canon of uh, the uh, by ad uh, 1215 which the church at that time gave was a milestone in prohibiting it because it prohibited any christian pastor priest from practicing or being present at such cases so if the pastor and priest is not present of course you cannot administer it and thereby it actually had a unsung natural death but before this ad 1215 there was an intellectual preparation for this canon to come and one of the remarkable person was a theologian peter the chander peter the chander was a, a theologian at that time and based on the holy bible 
he argued against this trial by ordeals and appealed to the church to take a firm stand this was a study was done on this peter uh, peter the chandel by john bradwin who is a professor of his history at the john hopkins university so this is published and i am going to extensively quote john bradwin on the peter the chandel objection so peter the chandel initially took uh, the uh, people who tried to say that okay bible somehow how supports it he actually proved them wrong Uh, uh they took the miraculous interventions of god of course the miraculous interventions did not happen at the case of a judicial trial by ordeal miraculous interventions happened at other times so you cannot actually quote it they came up with the numbers chapter 5 where there is some similarity to the trial by ordeal because a woman suspected of adultery is brought before the priest and she is administered a bitter batter but the similarity ends there critical differences are there is no there is no pronoun judicial pronouncement whether she is guilty or not without the judicial pronouncement whether the person is guilty or not you cannot call it as a trial so it was not a trial by ordeal and there is no connection between bitter water and she being not pregnant or the other changes that are going to happen in her body if she is guilty there is no causal connection between that in the fire and burning there is a causal connection in the bitter water and the this thing there is no causal connection so this was not a uh, definitely not a trial by ordeal as uh, we can see it in the scripture and peter the chandler also objected to it and as a matter of argument he also pointed out that the new testament has superseded the old testament so appealing to old testament for any vague passage also so is not going to help the church first of all it was not a trial by ordeal and it is not going to help and in this numbers chapter 5 the woman is actually unharmed anybody any husband who suspect of her adultery will never take her because every husband knows that woman drinking a bitter water will never it is not going to happen and she will be automatically vindicated the natural result is actually her vindication not that she will be held guilt so this was not a trial by ordeal as i said there was no judicial pronouncement which is a key point if it was a trial there has to be a judicial pronouncement there has to be a punishment subsequent to it none of this the, neither the human court was taken out of the picture there was no human punishment if it all there was a punishment it was given by god not by humans so numbers chapter 5 doesn't fit into the trial by ordeal having having answered the critics peter the chandler pointed out to the holy bible how the holy bible prohibits it through the various ordinances peter the chandler definitely is pointed out to the scripture deuteronomy chapter 4 16 matthew chapter 4 verse 7 but deuteronomy 6 verse 16 matthew chapter 4 verse 7 which says you shall not tempt the lord when you are putting your hand into a boiling oil and expecting god to rescue you you are definitely tempting the lord you are actually breaking the commandment of the lord the commandment is you should not test the lord you should not put tempt the lord but here in the trial by ordeal you are tempting the lord therefore it is unscriptural it is goes against the scriptural so peter the uh, chandler said that and peter the chandler again took another test see if it is the lords there cannot be an error in it for example the test of prophecy if a prophet is from god 100 percentage it has to be correct 99 percentage is not acceptable so peter the chandler again pointed out to the scripture and said if it is the lord it has to be 100 percentage correct every time but in real life we know that many innocents are punished therefore this is not from the lord again peter the chandler uh, the uh, appeal to the church and showed that this is subjective if there were four people who were accused of a same crime and all the four are brought together the last one who picks the axe heated axe has a better chance of proving himself innocent because by that time the axe will be already a little more cold or its hot will become lesser so peter the chandler pointed out all this to the church and ask some very uh, pointed questions to the church actually if the church 
gives any kinds of credibility to this packet practice why is the church not implementing this practice in its own important affairs for example if the church wants to select if the catholic church wants to select the pope why do they go for election why not the trial by ordeal call all the cardinals and let the cardinals go through this trial by ordeal any important aspects affairs of the church church actually is never practicing it then why is the church giving any kind of credibility to the pagan practice we must stop it church must take it stand so this kind of uh, you would see all these things uh, the with the references proper references and complete verbatim quotations in the article that is uh, given in the link so the church was forced after the rational objections because bible aided and supported peter the chanter unlike the hindu scriptures which silenced the rational reasoning the rational objections bible aided it bible directed it bible gave new light to it and therefore the church was forced to take a stand in ad 1215 the fourth council of latin in canon number 18 the church prohibited any priest from participating any in any of the sex and thereby it had a natural death when the church took a stand kingdom after kingdoms in europe were forced to take a stand and thereby it died a natural death in the western world it is not that they were better than us they were equally worse in some places we were worse because we added insult to the injury by adding discriminatory caste practices otherwise they were equally foolish but the difference is when they accepted the christianity they got the divine light from the holy bible whereas dharma shastras darkened and blinded us you see how these two scriptures to this world views one based on myths and spurious shastras other the divine revelation of god impacts the practical life of the people trial by ordeal is a case study in that in fact we can take any other cases and we see how the bible transforms the society and hindu scriptures prohibits it from progression therefore those people who wants to appeal saying that oh our constitution is not as per the hindu shastra there is nothing native which was a criticism of golwakar do they want such practices to come back are they not themselves better off by following the divine guidance of the holy bible may the holy bible continue to guide us and give us light not just to the christians but to the whole humanity and bless us all may this case study force us to think about the divine scripture the holy bible and the hindu shastras and its real impact may god bless you all